Stoke-on-Trent, the home of the Potteries, a working class area with a culture of pubs, social clubs and hard graft. And with three of the top 10 PDC World Darts players from the area, this occurrence simply cannot be a coincidence. But what is it about the city which makes it so exclusively intertwined with one of the nation's best loved sports? Well, perhaps it started after the Second World War with a booming industry that followed. The Potteries, I was always had this mystique for darts. I can't think of anywhere I've been in every city in the country. Nobody's got darts like Stoke on Trent. But, uh, through Stoke on Trent, it's been the CIU clubs, the working men's clubs, the pubs. Darts has been a way of life in this city since 1950, so as I know, because I, I was born in 38, there was dart boards in the factories, everybody when they had a break they had a go of darts, it's always been here, Stoke on Trent is the home of darts. Darts is massive in Stoke. I mean, it goes right back to the 1950s. My dad used to play darts against a lot of a lot of rivals in Stoke on Trent. The rivalry has continued right the way through in the potties, right up to the present day. And he came back after the war, and he never put his darts away. And it's this working class mentality that has its origins in the Longton Potteries, which has led to many pub players earning more than just a living from the sports. The dart setting in the city being the perfect incentive to use its grit and determination to make it big on the circuit and be a real self-made inspiration for the working man, just like Adrian Lewis. Yeah, I think um, I think obviously you've got a valid point there. Um, I think it is. I mean, us from Stoke are, are all gritty and determined characters. Um, I mean, we always want win, really. You get the true red players, we come from a working class background and we want things in life and if you don't work hard in life, you don't get them things. So I think it just shows how much we do work in Stoke on Trent to thrive them possibilities in life. No, I think uh, we're, we're Stoke. Um, I mean, it's not the riches of Um It's one of them, you know, it's one of them things where darts is actually, you know, a cheap sport, if you can say that. Um, you haven't got I mean, every time you go to a pool table, you've got to pay 50p to a pound for have a game. But if you buy a, a cheap set of darts, they can last you years and years and it's always free. There's a lot of people down in Stoke that are dedicated. You know, I'm originally from Runcorn and the league up there was, was only a one night league on a Thursday. Down here, it's, it's every night of the week, it's just their sport down here, which is darts. And to attribute darts to success in Stoke, to it being a working class area would be oversimplistic. Just ask those at the darts based pub Crompos in Tunstall. Indeed with the World Championships being held at the Jollies Cabaret Club in Longton from 1979 to 1985, somebody did transform Stoke from being the home of darts to the mecca of darts. A person from a place called Stoke Newington and a man very well known in Stoke on Trent. Eric Bristow, who unfortunately I wasn't able to contact in order to appear in this film. When Eric Bristow came, the crafty cockney who was from down London came to Stoke because that was where the, the dart, everybody established darts was from, originally going back to, into the late 70s. That's where the World Championships were held locally in Stoke. So it's sort of like a heritage of darts and the mecca, everybody was drawn to playing in Stoke and, and that, that's the great great part about it. Eric was a big influence on the darts when he came up, you know, he inspired people to, to go out there and earn a good living. But there's not a lot of money in Stoke, so it's a good way of making a living. You know, and it's, it's a good working class area, so you get, you know, you've got a lot of good players to practice with as well. The Bristow moved into the area, uh, game back early 90s now. Eric Bristow got involved with Maureen Flowers on the circuit. Their marriages broke up, Eric moved to Stoke. He then nurtured Phil Taylor, and it's just blossomed from there. I was fortunate enough to come down from the North East to go to the pub called the Saga Makers Bottom Knocker, uh, where Phil Taylor, Sid Waddell, all the Sky Sports, all the lads were there, and that's where we really promoted it. Then I actually moved over to the Roebuck in Burslem, which was the land of darts, as I think it brought it out in me fully. I didn't realise to appreciate it till, it till I come to this area in Stoke on Trent. The actual jewel in my crown was coming down to Crompos and creating this fine area that you've got now that actually gives us the likes of Daz Whittingham, Adrian Lewis, Ian White, Andy Hamilton. They've all been down here, which is absolutely fantastic for the sport.
and of everybody flocking to Stoke to play in the leagues and join the crafty Cockney and Co. And with the booming pub industry, the only result was an immense quantity and quality of amateur darts, unrivaled anywhere else in the country, and which can attest to elite players still playing on a regular basis. I think it's the local leagues. I think the local leagues are so strong um, down in Stoke. Um, it's, it's just whatever league you're playing is a good standard and I think that's where the quality comes through with all the local lads and that's how you end up with the, the top players. Everybody says still comes out to Capital of Dots. Um, you always have rivals and uh, play each other week in week out. It's, uh, that's what it's about, rivalry. Darts in the potties now is absolutely phenomenal because the players play Monday, Tuesday right through to Sunday and it doesn't matter what league they're in, the quality is there. You'll see a lot of the professionals coming down the Stoke just to have a practice game before they go on to major tournaments. Whether you're playing against Adrian Lewis or Andy Hamilton, which me and Andy have had a few um, encounters in the, the local league and the pub just stopped, stopped and watched us play and you know if you went to the Alley Pally you'd be paying £30 a ticket for this but we all play in the local leagues and it, it, it's just great, the atmosphere is great as well. The same in local leagues, it's, there's more pressure on the, 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 the high performance player than there is on the, the lower performance player because they're the underdogs at the end of the day, they want to beat you and that's why it makes it so strong. Yeah, without a doubt, I mean Staffage is probably the best Super League county in the country, the likes of Adrian Lewis, Andy Hamilton, we even got John Parton here playing for us now when he's over from Canada. The infrastructure around Stoke with all the different leagues on different nights, it's, it's, it's massive. If you Google darts, it brings up Stoke automatically and you look at all the leagues, it brings all of them through from the Super League, the Burzum League, all of them pulled together and they, they're the big leagues in the area, that's where everybody plays, that's where everybody wants to play and that tells the story. Every, everybody in Stoke loves darts and that's where the home of darts is and that's where all the information is out there. And the unique quality of these leagues means they will continue to be both a cause and consequence of Stoke as being the centre of darts. Something the Hammer believes will keep the revolving door open for future generations in the potteries. Yeah, without doubt, I mean, you can go anywhere, any night that we can get a great game of darts, quality players, quality, quality fighting players as well. So it goes to show how strong the game is in Stoke on Trent. And like you said all along, we've grown up with dartboards, our fathers played dartboards. And, probably generations down there they played darts as well so it just makes it more it make better for us for carry on the tradition from the pottery factories to bristow to every town and pub in stoke the game of ours remains firmly at home in the city more than willing to accommodate it and with the structure in place and heroes to aspire to stoke will always be the home of darts